Today I wanted to do a video on smokers uh, and smoking meats. Basically I wanted to just kind of give a, uh, a short discussion on types of smokers and how they're used and uh, pretty much why they're used. Um, so let's get down to this. First of all, smoked meats, and this is what we're talking about here, is, is taking wood, creating smoke with it, and uh, cooking our food with that. And this is done with meats predominantly. And this is something that goes back thousands of years. A long time ago, if you took an animal, and it was a large animal, you needed to preserve as much of it as possible. You didn't want to waste anything. You didn't have refrigeration, so you had to do what you had to do, and that meant cutting the animal down into small strips and then smoking and drying those strips. So basically they would make like a smoked jerky with most of their meat, and uh, that's how they got a lot of meat protein. So a really, this is something that goes back to, well, I don't know if it goes back to caveman or not. I just know that it's really, really old and people have been doing it for a long time. When I was studying this, I couldn't find a lot of dates, a lot of specifics. You, you can't, you know, attribute, let's say, an offset smoker to a certain specific individual, uh, or at least I couldn't find anything leading to that. There may be some information out there if I dig deep enough. However, in this case, that's not where I wanted to take the conversation. I wanted to talk about different styles of smokers, how they're built, and why these different styles exist. Um, and basically, it's just everybody's trying to improve on the wheel, okay? You got the wheel, let's see if we can make it better, faster, stronger, whatever. So they come up with different designs when it comes to smokers. Now. My personal preference is I like to use what's called an offset smoker. Some people call it an offset pipe smoker. It, to me, it's more like two barrels uh, than a piece of pipe. So I would say it's an offset barrel smoker, really, if you wanted to get down to it, um, where one side is for your fire and the other side is for um, cooking, and then there's a place, a chimney, for the smoke to escape through. This is a very common design, but also other common designs are the vertical or upright smokers. Sometimes these are called water smokers also, and these smokers are really nice. It puts the fire directly underneath it. There's water in there that humidifies the smoke, uh, which is a good thing, and you can do that in an offset smoker, and I'll show you in a moment. Um, also, there's the electric smokers, uh, where you can use wood chips, or some of them use pellets. And that's another thing I wanted to mention. These pellet smokers. Folks, yeah, it seems pretty convenient. Good design, very convenient. However, I don't want to be shoehorned into every time I want to smoke my meat, I have to purchase someone's proprietary wood product in order to get that accomplished. I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to have to go to a certain store to buy a certain kind of pellet to get my grill to work the way it's supposed to work. Instead, I would rather have something that's a little more universal. That's one, one of the reasons I like the offset smoker myself. Uh, you can put any wood in there you want. You can put charcoal in there if you would like. Um, you can put logs down to chunks. It works fine, and you can get that wherever you want to get it. You can harvest it in your own backyard if you'd like. Uh, it's, you know, whatever wood that you have handy, you can cook with. Understand this. <clears throat> There's a lot of folks that say, I like the flavor of charcoal. Well, most of that is oak. So if you like the flavor of charcoal, there's a good chance you're going to enjoy cooking with oak. All right, so consider that. Also, in Texas, it's very popular to cook with pecan. Now, it needs to be said, pecan is a type of hickory tree, so you're getting a hickory flavor when you cook with pecan. And you can do long smoking with pecan or hickory both. And when I say long smoking, well, what's the difference in long or short smoking? Different woods contain different amount 
of tannins, all right? The oak and uh, pecan, hickory, those are rather dry woods by themselves. They don't have a lot of oil in them. Uh, mesquite is a much oilier, oilier <laughs> wood, so it's not nearly as dry as the others. Uh, the tannins in it are a little bit stronger and produce a very robust smoke. Uh, very neat wood to cook with, but you don't smoke as long with mesquite as you might with uh, hickory, and that is because you could get astringent flavors if you smoke too long with the uh, mesquite wood. Um, you can make up the difference just by switching over to oak or something like that part of the way through your cooking. You get a combination flavor, but the mesquite will certainly dominate. Now on these designs of smokers, I was mentioning the pellet smokers and how you're kind of roped into buying their proprietary product. Who wants all that? Well, I'll tell you what, think about it, think carefully. Uh, the electric ones I see as a very practical alternative. If you uh, are confined in space, you don't have a lot of room and maybe you have to store the item indoors because let's say you live in a, an apartment complex or something like that. Well, then you're going to want something more compact, something that's more sensible. And the electric smokers fit that bill. Also, once they're set outside, they don't produce an obnoxious amount of smoke. It's a small amount of smoke and they're very efficient in how well they work. So consider that option. Um, in a little bit, we're going to go downstairs. I'm going to show you a new smoker and what you'll need to do to treat the inside if you have the type of smoker that I have downstairs. Um, so we're going to uh, go into how to use the smoker itself, how to set it up, what kind of temperatures that you're going to want when you're smoking, and that kind of stuff. Let's go and take a look downstairs at the smoker and we'll discuss its design, compare its design to another smoker that's down there and, you know, give you some, some way of seeing these things in a broader perspective. All right, so if you're considering buying, this is the show for you. It's going to be a lot of information for you when it comes to making that decision. Now let's go downstairs, take a look at these guys. Come on. Now here's the new smoker that I've just finished putting together and I have it right next to my old one over here. Now our biggest differences are, look at where the wheels are in relationship with the smoker box. When this unit gets moved, you have to lift the whole thing. It's rather heavy and it's hard to get around. On this design over here, they have redesigned that a little bit where they have put the wheels on the firebox side, allowing your firebox to become a counterweight, making it much easier to move the whole thing. So that's our biggest difference right there, folks. Now on this one, I just finished putting it together and it's ready to be seasoned. I don't want to smoke in it until I have seasoned it. Well, it looks like we have a beautiful spring day. Lots of lawn going on and mowing and different services are happening. So if you hear any background noises, you know what's happening there. What I'm doing here is pouring up some flax seed oil. Now, why am I using flax seed oil? The reason is, folks, when it comes to seasoning a pan, when it comes to uh, seasoning a grill, anything like that, flaxseed oil is extremely high in omega-3 fatty acids, okay? And it is those particular acids which actually season better. So you're looking for oils high in omega-3. When you're going to prep a grill like this, a smoker, just give the inside a good rub with the oil. You don't have to be neat about it because appearance isn't going to really matter on the inside of a smoker. So go ahead, if you own one of these, if you just got one, give it this treatment and you will be doing yourself a favor. This will help the item last a lot longer. I'm almost finished. Don't forget to get the inside of your lid. And so you'll know, what we're doing here is we're adding years, literally years to this. Uh, this is just like when you're 
doing a coating on a let's say an iron skillet if you're going to season an iron skillet it is the same basic idea gives you a slick coating that cleans easily and protects against rust adds life and that's that while i have the grill open and you can see down inside i wanted to show you this is my old water pan from my last smoker this is just the base of a broiling pan works great you can also buy thin foil pans they work good for this but always put a pan right down in here the idea of the pan is you put water in it it releases moisture in here while you're smoking and you get much better quality barbecue okay so have your pan ready to go before you start cooking okay so we've had a bit of a discussion on different kinds of smokers you've seen how to season a smoker we're going to get into this a little deeper now um, I'm going to discuss basically the different kinds. Number one, we mentioned earlier, the electric smoker. It looks like a vertical box. It's just a, a rectangle with a door on one side of it and racks on the inside. And in the bottom, there is a place for you to put wood. It's usually a little tray that sits over an electric burner. And, uh, and, and it looks like the old time stove burners, you know, that same kind of um, item. The, uh, to the side of that, there's often a pan for water also. And that's sort of one of the integral ingredients to smoking. Water has to be present. You need some moisture, otherwise the meat just dries out. Okay, you don't want to cause that. So all of these designs in some way incorporate the use of water. Now the electric smokers are very balanced in how they work. So you can set an exact temperature and it will hold that exact temperature. You don't have to check it for anything other than refilling the wood, and that's the only attendance that's required. Now, some of those, in fact, use the pellets. Some of them use chips, and they can refill their own uh, smoker. And that's pretty neat. That's, that's the more advanced ones, a little more expensive ones. So you've got several ones, different smokers that are electric to look at and it's a vertical smoker and that's really all it's used for it's used just for smoking some smokers are both a grill and a smoker like that we mentioned earlier the pellet grill these pellet grills are often just like a regular gas grill and then they have a electric slash gas burner kind of uh, smoker system on the side it produces smoke and pumps it into the grill and you can add smoke to your steaks while you're cooking steaks you know like grilling or if you want you can turn off the grill portion and just use the thing as a smoker so that thing has a lot of of expandability in its use which the vertical electric ones do not have they're only a smoker now there's one that sort of lives in this little world in between there. Actually a couple of different ones. One of them people call a bullet smoker. I don't think that's a good description for it. It's shaped like a bullet. I think that's the reason they call it that. But it's just, it's a vertical round tube that has a dome top on it. Originally these were referred to as water smokers. Now water smokers are very efficient. They work very well. The whole idea there is you have in the bottom a place for your charcoal and your wood, you create fire, and there's a little door that allows you to get to that. Okay, it's like a damper door. Then above that, there is a bowl, it's like a large pan, that holds water. So you have the fire generating smoke, heating that water, the smoke's coming up around it, and then smoking the meat on top. By the way, these things work really well. They don't hold a lot of meat, but for doing smaller smoking jobs, they're very practical. All right, so that's, that's a neat one to look at. Again, it's mostly just for smoking. You really can't grill on it not in a practical way. The kettle types, and you've seen those, they, they look like a big bowl with a dome on top. Kettle-type grills can be used, believe it or not, for smoking also. 
You do a small fire in the center or off to one side, usually in the center if it's the kettle type. The square ones, you can do it off to one corner. But the kettles, you do a small fire in the center, keep that controlled, and use that to produce your heat and smoke. Placing the food around the outside. And that way you get this area where the food can smoke without too much direct heat and it does a wonderful job. So there you have something that kind of fills a gap in between the two of them. Okay, so you can use certain grills as a smoker. <clears throat> as you've seen, the one I have is what's called an offset smoker. An offset smoker I think is really practical because they can be used as a grill. You can use it as a smoker. Uh, the firebox itself is designed with extra grates on a lot of those so you can actually grill where the firebox is. And that, so if you're going to do grilling, that's really the best way. And if you think about it, that grate on that firebox will easily hold 12 hamburgers. All right, so that's a lot of cooking. The offset smoker, it's my preference. And that is, uh, and I'm not saying that any one of these is better than any other. They all have their place. I like the offset smoker because of its versatility but it does have some downsides. It's huge, it's heavy, it's hard to move, um, it's difficult to clean, it produces a lot of ash, um, and it's, it's just, a, it's work <laughs> to keep up with it, okay? So it's a, a neat thing to have, and it's very practical in the standpoint that I can smoke using just plain wood or wood chunks or charcoal, uh, processed charcoal or just, you know, like the, uh, the raw wood charcoal that you can buy now. There's a lot of options there. Um, there's several different choices there, as you can see. You've got a whole variety, whether they're the vertical ones or whether they're horizontal, they all smoke wonderfully. It needs to be said, certain smokers work better for doing what's called cold smoking. Cold smoking is when you want to make, let's say, your own bacon. You buy pork belly and you trim it up and then you're ready to smoke it, so you cold smoke. And that's when you go to the store and you buy bacon that says hickory smoked bacon, but it doesn't look like it's been cooked. It was cold smoke, folks. Uh, what they do is, is at about 60 to 70 degrees, they produce a smoky environment and they leave the meat in there for about an hour or hour and a half. That's called cold smoking. And it works like a charm. It makes for delicious meat. And um, some of these can do that. It is hard to do it with a offset smoker. You have to learn to make a very, very small fire. All right, and it's hard to get a small fire smoky enough, but it's doable. The electric ones do it quite easy. So look at the different kinds of smoking you can do and your needs, your space requirements, and you're gonna come up with whichever one of these is gonna work best for you. Uh, if you're watching this video and you're thinking of buying, this is the right video to watch because it gives you a lot of information to base decisions on. You know, like you saw me just um, treating my smoker to prevent it from rusting. Basically, I seasoned it the way you would season a skillet. Does that prevent all rust? No. Sometimes you get it on the edges, like the edges of the door and stuff like that, and that usually doesn't really account for anything important. But for the most part, as long as you've seasoned the inside of it, you're not going to have to worry about it rusting through anytime soon and you can always reseason it. Some smokers don't require that though. If you've got a stainless steel, we'll say a stainless steel electric smoker, you're not gonna have to season it, are you? But if you have a carbon steel smoker of any kind, it's pretty smart to do it. So, things like that come into play. We already mentioned the whole pellet thing. Do you wanna get strapped into buying a proprietary product? 
it works great don't get me wrong but if you're going to be entering a barbecue competition they don't allow pellet grills okay i've never seen one that does it's always natural fire they some will allow charcoal some do not um, none of them allow propane and none of them allow uh, pellet grills no electricity guys it's got to be natural another way of doing a smoker and this needs to be mentioned this is old-fashioned it requires that you own your own land okay so if you have your own land and be careful where you do it don't do it under a tree and I'm about to tell you why um, there's what's called a pit smoker all right and that's where you dig a pit in the ground and you start a big fire in that pit okay now the ground has natural moisture and it's usually good to do it during like rainy seasons and stuff like that when the ground has plenty of moisture in it so there's your moisture there you also are adding leaves uh, this is done for instance in Mexico when they make their form of barbecue that they call barbacoa and it's done in a pit they start the fire they cook it down to coals lots of them um, and then they layer in leaves they start with agave leaves because they're very thick they have a lot of moisture in them and they produce a very certain distinct flavor after lining it with agave leaves then they put meat in there and banana leaves and more meat and they layer that and cover it with brush and leave it overnight that produces fantastic barbecue okay if you have your own land you can do that but there's some things you need to remember never under a tree you don't want to light the poor trees roots on fire it's called starting a ground fire folks I don't know if you've ever heard of this if you light wood that's underground on fire that fire can travel lengthwise one day you have a pit barbecue the next day your tree is on fire for some reason be careful where you put it okay choose your location wisely and um, make sure the ground is in a good season when it's moist otherwise you could have a ground fire and that's not a happy thing it's not a good moment <clears throat> now let's smokers I want to show you a little bit more about these so what I want to do is I want to um, take you outside and show you the different parts and show you how an offset smoker works most of the lessons from an offset smoker apply to other kinds of smokers you know things like leaving that chimney open so forth and so on so we're gonna go out there take a look at how to light one up if you're using charcoal safe way to do it a good way how to get it started and basically how to take care of owning and using a smoker and this is on uh, the methodologies on the offset smoker but it as I mentioned it works for other designs as well let's go out and take a look at this come on now folks when you're using an offset smoker you've got two basic parts to this you have your firebox which is the smaller part that sits down lower and you have your heat chamber, this box right up here, that you put your food into, and this is where it gets smoked. All right, now you can use that part for grilling if you want. They often come with a separate grate. I don't use it for that because I just use a different kind of grill. But if you want, you can. I recommend never using a fire in the smoke chamber because it really messes with it and, and it, with its performance and how well it smokes meats. So always keep this kind of pure for just smoke. Um, in the bottom of your smoke chamber, put a large pan like this with some water in it, and that way it will keep your meat moist. You have a, on these, often there'll be a rack of some kind on the front. Your chimney over here needs to be wide open, so open it all the way up and keep it that way throughout smoking. You adjust your heat through the damper itself, and that's down here. On the side of your firebox you have what's called a damper and damper door the door is this part here the damper is the hole in the door itself and that's what controls your airflow in and out of this grill I often cook with these about half open and that way it doesn't get too hot you want to control the heat 
keep it below 220 for the best results. For lighting my fire, I start it with this open so it gets plenty of airflow in here and it'll light my charcoal quickly. Now when we're setting our smoker up, as I mentioned, we need water in the bottom. Another thing I would like to mention, as long as you never use this for cooking in this part other than nothing other than smoking, then these grates are always easy to clean off. These were just washed from the last use. They're looking good and I don't have to worry about them getting messed up. Don't cook your enamel off of these guys. Be good to your smoker. Now my water tray needs some water. Now in the bottom of a smoker, there's always a drain hole. So make sure you have some sort of a bucket or a catch pan or something underneath that drain hole. If not, it could lead to problems. You might end up with a mess. Now when we use a smoker, we have a chimney up here. Make sure that sucker's always wide open when you're smoking. Never use this to control smoke flow or heat or anything in your smoker. This is to keep rain out of it when you're not cooking, okay? So keep that open during the smoking and control everything through your damper. When it comes time to light your charcoal, never, never, ever put charcoal in one of these or wood and use lighter fluid. The, the creosote released from that lighter fluid will absolutely ruin the flavor of all barbecue that comes from your smoker forever after, okay? So it, keep it away from it. Now, when you're doing your charcoal, if you'll simply light it with newspaper, using one of these, it lights faster. You get very, very hot results from this. And when it's time to cook, it's a lot sooner. Okay, so go ahead, get you one of these chimneys. They're worth the money and it starts your fire fast. Okay, and as I said, we're gonna have a little background noise. Some folks doing the lawns and I'm gonna light this paper up. Once you've used one of these, you really don't want to go back. Now here's something important. Once you light your paper, put it on something that allows air to come up through it. By allowing air to come up through that, it's going to light that charcoal a little bit faster. If you set it on the concrete, it can only pull air through the side vents and will not light as quick. So go ahead, give it plenty of air on a grate, this is the best way. Well, the paper's burned off. It is now getting started. So that lower layer is heating up. You're getting good smoke out of it. That means it has started well. Give it a good old 15, 20 minutes. When you see it ashed on top, you're ready to go. I'm getting some gloves on. This is something you definitely want to do. If you're going to be using a starting chimney, these things get really hot, even though the handle's way back. It's easy to get burned just from the heat coming up from the coals as you pour it. So you want to watch out. And also the grate that it's sitting on, don't touch that with your hands. It is red hot right now. So I'm going to lift this up. Remove my grate. And pour off my coals. Now folks, my temperature gauge is showing a little over 250. In fact, it's about 260. So what I'm going to do is close the door on the side of my firebox and allow that temperature to come down because I'm not feeding it as much air now. When you choke down on that air a little bit, you control that temperature. And I want the temperature right at 225, 220, 225 right in there is the most perfect range for smoking meat. You will get the best flavor and the best texture when it's finished. Now as you can see, when you have a temperature that's as high as we have this, you're going to be cooking off the outside of the meat. So I want to caution you about putting your meat in there too early. If you put it in there and your temperature's high like this, guys, what's going to end up giving you is it's going to be cooked meat, but it isn't going to smoke as well. What I want is for that smoke to penetrate and once it goes past 250, you cook a rind onto the outside of the meat. And frankly, at that point, it doesn't do as well. So I want that temperature down. When we get it down to 225, 
Then we're ready to start cooking. I have closed my damper, it's only an inch wide right now, and that way I can get the temperature stable on this. It's hanging out right at 260 the way it was, but I need to bring it down so that it will smoke properly. Well, our temperature has come down where I need it, right about 225. Um, and so what I want to do is go ahead and get my firebox all prepped. Now when I say prepping my firebox, I'm referring to getting the wood that I want to smoke with in there. That way I can get it heating. Now I like to place this wood along the metal, along the sides. It slowly heats it, allows it to smolder, and it does a beautiful job. And what I want to do is to add about six more charcoal briquettes. I'm going to stir this fire a little bit. This will cause the temperature to come up just slightly. That is the reason I have it uh, choked it down. Right now, my damper door over here, the damper, is open only about one half of an inch. And that simple one half of an inch is going to allow enough air to get good ignition on the charcoal and get the right temperature and hold it there. As you can see, the color of the smoke is blue and I want to keep it there. I want it wispy blue just like it is right there. That's very nice. And that's what gives you good quality smoke when you're smoking. It'll provide the best tasting barbecue. As you can see from the damper here, I have it open a little more than an inch wide at the base. And it's holding good at 200 degrees. If I open that, I can bring my temperature up to the 220 I'm looking for. I'll take that and open it in about half inch increments until I get the temperature I'm looking for. Well, that's what I have for you when it comes to smokers. Folks, there's a lot of decision making when it comes to buying a smoker. So think it through carefully, think through your needs, think through the costs involved, location you're going to be keeping it, how frequently you use it and all of that and pick one out that's gonna be suitable for your needs. All right, thank you very much for watching Texas Cooking today. I appreciate it very much. You folks, if you would, please have a good day. Please share this video with anybody that you know of that's even thinking about buying a grill or a smoker, because I think it could be very helpful for a lot of folks. Thank you for watching and well, have a good day, folks.